It's going to tie a sort of a hybrid type fly. Uh, it's going to be articulated and it's going to involve a, a soft plastic. So one of these little sort of clipper shads in the back. This is a pike or a jack pike type pattern. So this is a it's a Sakuma Manta 545 Extra. This is about a 6 uh, And to attach the shad or the soft plastic what we're going to have to do is put in a bait screw. Now alternatively you could tie it short and just slide your shad over the shank of the hook. So what I've got here is one of these bait screws and I'm going to use a bit of this is a very heavy plastic coated seven strand wire and I'm just going to fold that in its middle and pass it through the eye of our screw and then we'll set that on the back and then tie that heavy wire onto the top of the shank. Now you need to use something heavy so as it doesn't sag. And when we get it in place this thing is going to stay at the back and create our articulation. And then we'll super glue that in. Now that's not actually going to be uh, weight bearing at all, you know, to you know, it's not going to have to hold on to a hook or anything like that, there, so it doesn't have to be doubled back or anything like that. So, the majority of this fly is going to be bucktail, and I'm going to use uh, a white bucktail and also uh, an olive bucktail, and we're going to have like a white belly to our fly. So if we take a bunch of bucktail, turn the hook upside down, get that in place, and then pull into it, it'll splay out a little bit. And then I'm going to tie down these forward pointing bits. Then I'm just going to separate out 50% of that bunch, so halves on one side of the hook shank and halves on the other. The reason I'm using bucktail is because it should also stop our, uh, our soft plastic or the articulation from being able to get in and get tangled in the hook as much. So next, back of the fly we're going to use this uh, olive bucktail. We'll take a slightly bigger bunch of this because I said the, uh, the belly is a, is a smaller portion of the actual profile of the fly than the back. We'll put that slightly bigger bunch on the back. So now you see we're getting this two-tone effect. And I'm going to put in a little bit of flash. In this case it's just a, a pearl, sort of a mylar. I'm going to set that up on top as a bunch and then double that back and tie over itself and then take our super glue and super glue that whole tie in point there and before that dries I'm going to take a bit of this sort of silver dubbin twist it on and wrap it into that wet super glued portion. Alright, so we're going to repeat the first section here. So, same again. A bunch of white bucktail. Pull into it, then push those tips down, otherwise they'll splay. Separate it out either side of the midline. 
and then a bunch of the olive on top. This time I'm going to put in a bit of uh, Crinkle Mirage, and this is in a peacock colour. So I'm going to take out about three to four strands of that and double them over and split it. So then we end up with twice as many strands and set that up into the back of the fly, tie it in about two thirds of the way along its length, and then double that back. That'll give us a sort of a scaly effect within the within the flight. And as before. Glue in the tie in and repeat the uh, the dubbing portion. Dub that into the wet bit and we'll repeat this process again. Now I'm tying in tighter at the front than at the back because I don't because it's a jack pike pattern and jack pike are generally sort of long shaped. I don't want to display out as much as I normally would with a one of these sort of patterns. And then I'll super glue again all the tie-ins and just hold this back in position a bit to give it a bit more streamlined. Then we'll take our. Uh, Mirage again. Again, a few strands of that. Double it. Tie it in two thirds along its length and fold it back. Okay. So Next I want to get some sort of barring into it, so what I'm going to do is use this sort of dark olive uh, dyed saddle, a grizzle saddle. Take two feathers out of that, and then we're going to put one on each side. To give us the impression of the barred markings of a, of a pike. We're now going to start to consider the making of the of the head of this fly. So uh, we're going to go for as the theme of the rest of it, uh, olive on top and white underneath. But I'm going to use a bit of white craft fur here. So I cut a bunch of that off, pull out the sort of rubbish underneath. I'm going to turn the fly upside down and come forward to the eye. I'll lay in the white underneath, leave that there. I'm actually going to tie over that as we progress, but uh, we'll leave it there for now. And then for the back of the fly, I'm going to use this, which is a it's a fox tail. It was a sort of a grey fox tail with black tips that I've dyed in a chartreuse colour, 
and what that gives me is a sort of a, an olive in certain portions of it. So I'm going to strip out a lot of the under fur, turn it over, lay that in on top. Trim this back a bit. Then I'm going to wrap over and tie down these butt ends. And next, I'm going to take some holographic angel hair, pull out strands of it so that they're in line, and then I'm going to lay that all around the fly and tie it in. At the back tied to this bunch, I'm going to pull that forward and tie it in at the front as well just behind uh, where the head bunch is going to fold back. Then to finish the fly what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in a dubbed section in that gap so we'll take the silver dubbin and put it on our tie-in thread. Super glue this gap section. And then wind our silver dubbin into there. Then fold back the fox portion. Bring the tie-in thread up over the back of the eye, then slide underneath and pull back the the craft fur. A few wraps in front and hitch finish that. Now we'll just comb that out, top and bottom, before we set the glue into it. So that'll give us an even sort of a coverage around the shank. Pull all this back, and then glue the front portion. And that'll set our tie -in thread in there. But also what I wanted to do by pulling it back is to set the head shape kind of narrow. I'll just clean the eye out with a, a bit of a feather. So that's the fly portion tied. Now what we need to do is add eyes on, but we'd wait until our glue dries. So, as usual, I have another one done. So, I'll take this away. Now, because it's not that easy to handle the thing until the eyes dry, I'm going to show you. So, we take the uh, bait screw, stick it into our soft plastic, and Twist that on like a corkscrew. So then our soft plastic is in the back of it. And because it's only one of these little flipper sheds, there's a bit of weight to it, but it's not, it should be fully castable on a, on a heavier sort of pike made setup. So we set our hook back in the base and then we're going to add our eyes. And in this case I'm going to use uh, these Sort of like a gold and black type eye. And 
as usual the uh, Eagle Stick Serious Glue. So put a good blob of glue on the back. And then force it. Down onto our tying materials, flip the fly over, check it for position. Do the same on this side. And then we just adjust them until they're equal. I'll take my finger and wet it so the glue doesn't stick to it and I just want to get a bit of a lip of glue folded onto the eye. As I said it's not as neat as just sticking it on but it's more secure. And that articulated hybrid fly, say half soft plastic, half fly and you're looking at uh, something around about 8 to 9 inches there of a jack pike pattern and obviously soft plastics are going to get chewed by pike's teeth but you can always replace that and you'd replace it with, as I said the same, this is a gunky clipper but you could replace it with any sort of a shad or any sort of a of a grub tail or something like that there as and when the pike make much of it.